Today's video is uh, going to be about uh, drug side effects uh, and how to think about them. Uh, and, and first, some general principles is every drug has side effects. So anytime you're using a drug, you need to consider the cost in terms of side effects. And now, of course, unfortunately, uh, the financial cost uh, versus the benefit. Uh, no drug is free of problems. Uh, a few years ago, I looked at aspirin, and there were more deaths from aspirin than AIDS that year. Uh, so even something that you're used to using and, and accept as part of your daily life may not be uh, great. Baby aspirin, one baby aspirin a day comes with a significant increased risk of hemorrhagic stroke, for example. Uh, and so always you need to think about cost in terms of damage versus benefit. So as a result, you only use drugs you need to use and use the lowest dose necessary. Nevertheless, drugs uh, are FDA approved and used because for the right patient, the cost in terms of risk exceeds the benefit. Uh, and cancer treatment is, the heart of cancer treatment is this. Uh, uh, where possible, we try and use diet and lifestyle uh, for general health issues uh, and try and be careful about being only as aggressive as we need to be. Uh, but that doesn't keep us from being as aggressive as we uh, need to be for advanced patients. So for us, the, the key initial step uh, is trying to assess uh, how aggressive the patient's cancer is and what treatment is likely to be uh, effective and have uh, a good cost versus benefit uh, ratio. Some broad principles of cancer, of drug pharmacology in general. Um, the standard therapeutic dose of most drugs is roughly half of the toxic dose. There are a few drugs that can be used in, in excess of that. Uh, Avidart, for example, is one of the safest drugs uh, out there. It's hard to commit suicide with Avidart because of the huge safety margin. But in general, there's a fairly narrow margin between the therapeutic dose of a drug and one that causes significant side effects. Uh, the other broad principle is for most drugs, a 25% reduction in dose is the smallest dose reduction that reduces the side effects significantly. A 50% dose reduction can often result in a major change and a 75% reduction uh, uh, is enough for most drugs to eliminate troublesome side effects. The question is that these reduced doses, uh, is the drug going to be effective? Um, uh, patient perception of, of, of drug side effects can also be off. Um, most men with prostate cancer in their 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, my oldest patient is about to be 106, uh, yet many patients assume anything that happens to them uh, is a drug they're taking, not the fact that they've got an illness. Uh, so every fall with the uh, fall virus epidemics, which are many, not just influenza, time and again I got a patient called me with a viral illness and has selected one of the drugs that they're convinced caused the problem. Uh, and oftentimes there is no relationship between the side effects that they've identified and the drug they've chosen to attribute the side effects to. So it's very important uh, to be in touch with your doctor and not assume that the side effects you're, the, the symptoms you're having are a drug side effect at all and that you're picking the right drug to attribute the side effect to. Uh, so that's really, really important uh, thing to think about. Now, package inserts are approved by the FDA and are obliged to include any possible thing that occurred during clinical development uh, that might be attributable to the drug. And so you'll notice that almost every drug lists headache, because headaches happen. And you never know whether it's the drug or not. But many drugs are labeled as causing headaches when really it's just a, a regulatory side effect. Diarr diarrhea and constipation are also common, and so they appear on almost every drug. Uh, and nausea too. Uh, so I'm very skeptical about when a package insert attributes headache, nausea, vomiting, or constipation. 
uh, to a, a drug. And I think carefully about that. Uh, another thing that, that uh, people really need to think about, there is a myth afoot that somehow supplements are of a different class uh, and are not uh, nearly as dangerous as prescription drugs, and nothing could be further from the truth. As a drug guy, uh, any, any chemical, natural or organic or artificial, is going to have side effects and benefits. So I think of a supplement the same way I would a prescription drug. Lipitor and curcumin are no different to me. They're both drugs. They have effects, benefits and side effects. Uh, and in truth, uh, with supplements, you're dealing with an added problem in that they're not clean and pure in many cases, like a prescription drug. When you buy a prescription drug, you know exactly how much of the active ingredient is in it because the plants are site visited by the FDA and drug companies get into big trouble, some every year, because they're not adhering to it. No one's looking over the shoulder of supplement manufacturers. I first got a window to the dark underbelly of this when patients were coming in with vitamin D deficiency. Uh, and so I put patients on vitamin D, said go to your local uh, health food store or drug store and buy vitamin D. And uh, we then followed their blood level. And at that point, less than half of the vitamin D over the counter appeared to have any vitamin D in it. Or if there was, none of it ever got into the patient. Vitamin D supplements have improved since then. But uh, I think if you just buy a supplement from some company, the guarantee that what's in the pill uh, is what's on the label is, is leery, chancy. Now the literature is full of case after case of people with serious side effects from supplements because of contamination. So this is a serious problem uh, in the supplement industry. So my view of supplements is they're drugs all right. They're, they're dirtier, less pure, and there isn't the same safety testing for most supplements uh, as there is for uh, the prescription drugs. So I view supplements inherently less safe. The other in terms of, of toxicity, the most, some of the most poisonous compounds uh, available are natural products. Uh, and, and so, and the literature now is full of uh, situations where supplements that have been used for thousands of years, now that they're getting scrutiny, are not so safe as they, we thought they were. Um, and so, a big, big problem. And just in the past year, I had two patients develop severe liver damage uh, by taking supplements that were contaminated. The other problem is interactions. Drug interactions are a big problem. Well, since supplements are drugs too, Interactions between supplements and prescription drugs uh, is a serious problem that I have to deal with on a monthly basis. Uh, and so one thing that patients tend to do, which I strongly discourage, is they get to their doctor and get their prescriptions. Then they go home and ad lib uh, with a, a supplement catalog uh, and throw in the supplements on top of the prescription drugs as though it's not going to make any difference. Uh, I had one patient come to me from Texas. And you know these yellow legal page uh, sheets? Two sides of two pages listed with supplements. And of course he had trouble eating, lo and behold, because he was taking so many supplements. Uh, and he said, well, you know, if information's on the internet about a supplement, it's got to be true because the government is um, would eliminate uh, false claims, and of course that's not true at all. The uh, internet is an extraordinarily bad source of information about the safety of supplements and the dangers of prescription drugs. Uh, my own pet peeve is the internet sites on statins, and sure statins like any drug has side effects, but uh, the internet is full of crazy stories about the dangers of supplements, of, of statins, so uh, this, these are important issues. Uh, my last a video um, two weeks ago was on metformin, and I noted an interaction between curcumin uh, and metformin uh, isn't a classic example of that. And there were no way I know to have anticipated that, that curcumin makes the GI side effects of metformin much worse for many, many patients. 
Uh, and this is a classic example, though curcumin has been used in Indian medicine for thousands of years. And there's a fascinating literature on, on, on curcumin. Evidence for benefit and safety of curcumin are are negligible compared to the safety and benefit documentation of metformin. So if I were given a choice between curcumin and metformin, I wouldn't think twice I'd go to the pres prescription metformin over, over curcumin. Uh, and so it's really, really important to be careful about the interaction of uh, supplements with prescription drugs, uh, particularly cancer drugs, because ma many of the drugs for advanced cancer have uh, a narrow safety margin, taxed here, for example. And all the supplement would need to do is slow the clearance of taxotere from the body, lead to higher blood levels, and cause wreck, wreck holy havoc with you. So you need to be very, very careful. So I hope that this helps you begin to think about the side effects of drugs, uh, when is it a drug, when it is not, and relative safety, um, uh, again, broad principles. Only take a drug or supplement when you need to. Take the lowest dose that gets the job done, etc. Hope you enjoyed this and hope to shed some light on it. Bye.